Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and I am here with lesson number one on building a GPS tracker using the most excellent Adafruit Ultimate GPS Breakout Board and the BeagleBone Black. If you were with us for uh, our series of lessons on Arduino, you know that we built a GPS tracker using the Adafruit Ultimate GPS and the Arduino. But what happened to me on that project, we finally just sort of ran out of horsepower on the uh, Arduino. And there were some other things I wanted to do with the project, and I just couldn't move it forward because I was out of memory on the, uh, on the Arduino. The other thing that you run into in using the Arduino is uh, the Arduino is not very well suited for dealing with strings and manipulating strings. Now, if you're really like a hardcore, you know, live in your mom's basement kind of programmer, you could probably go in and make Arduino do whatever you wanted it to. But I just find that it is not intuitive and it is not very easy to try to get uh, to try to get the Arduino to work with strings. Well, the thing is, is that with this uh, GPS, what it's doing is it's just spitting out data. It's sitting there just spitting out raw data. And the data coming off of the GPS is called NEMA sentences, N-M-E-A sentences. And it's just this long string of data. And to take that long string of numbers and commas and numbers and commas, and even the format isn't exactly... <coughs> what you would think of real intuitive attitude, longitude, things like that. So you got to do a lot of manipulation on that string. And what is most excellent at doing string manipulation? And that is Python. And you know, if you've been through our series of lessons on the BeagleBone Black, we have been using uh, running Python on it. So this might just be the ultimate combination for a really great project of building a GPS track that you can just go all types of diff different directions with is combining the BeagleBone Black for its horsepower and its small size and low cost and portability with the Ultimate GPS from uh, Adafruit. <clears throat> Why am I using the Adafruit uh, GPS? Well, if you know about my background, I teach high school and we do a lot of high altitude ballooning. In fact, if I spin this around, you can see the picture in the background here that we took from about 120,000 feet, a picture that we sent back showing the darkness of space, the curvature of the Earth, and just a little bit of that blue is the Earth's atmosphere down below. Uh, that if I swing around here, hanging up over there, that triangular region hanging on uh, the ceiling is our flight platform where we build instrumentation packages to send to space. And then that antenna looking thing on a tripod is our ground-based tracking station. And so we do, in this room, a lot of high altitude ballooning. And the nice thing about the Adafruit GPS is I have found that it goes to the high altitudes without shutting off. A lot of the GPS manufacturers don't interpret the, the, the government regulations correctly. Basically, they don't want you to be building your own intercontinental ballistic missiles. And so they shut down legally. If you manufacture GPS, you have to shut it down if something is really high and really fast. If something is really high and really fast, it might be an intercontinental ballistic missile. But things can go really fast without being an ICBM, or they can be really high without being an ICBM. And so the correct implementation of the law should have been an or. Shut it down if it's, uh, uh, I mean, shut it down if it should have been and. Shut it down if it's really high and going really fast. But people being afraid of government regulations did the for thing and did an or. If it's high, we're going to shut it off. And if it's fast, we're going to shut it off. And therefore, a lot of the GPS is shut down if you get high when really legally they're not required to. The Adafruit Ultimate GPS will go very high. I believe our highest uh, altitude measurement that we've gotten off of this thing is right at 120,000 feet. And at that point, we lost uh, we lost communication with it and we never saw an indication that the GPS shut down it's just we lost our uh, telemetry signal and so we were in the dark at that point but 
that is why I love this combination. And we're really looking at this so far. We've flown the Arduino and we've flown the Raspberry Pi. In fact, our, our present flight package has a uh, Raspberry Pi running Python controlling two Arduino Nanos over a little on uh, onboard Ethernet uh, network that we have going. But I like the Beagle Bone Black and I'm going to play around with it for this series of lessons. So that is what we're doing. If you go to our website, toptechboy.com, and you go to Beagle Bone Black Lessons and look for the GPS Lesson 1, I've got some links where you can order this uh, uh, equipment if you don't already have it. But go ahead and get your equipment ordered, and then we will move ahead with this project. After you get your equipment, the next thing we're going to have to do is hook this up. It is really pretty easy to hook up. You can come over here to our website, toptechboy.com. You can go to the Beagle Bone Black Lessons. If uh, you come to Beagle Bone Black Lesson number one on the GPS, you will get this diagram. <clears throat> Pretty easy to uh, hook up. If you look, uh, make sure that you're oriented right. This is the little 5-volt plug, and this is header P9. We are working off of header P9. Let me just show you. I'll go BeagleBone Black, Lesson 1. We are operating on this left header, and this shows you the pinout. We are going to be using the uh, pin 24 and pin 26, which is the serial transmit and the serial receive. And so we will be using those two pins. <clears throat> Looking at our setup here, you can see that we are using, our, we are powering our uh, GPS from the BeagleBone Black pin 1357. Okay, pin 7 will give us a nice 5 volt signal that goes into VN. And then we will be using pin 1 as our system ground. And then this was pin 24. And the way these goes, it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, and 26. Now, one of the common mistakes I see when I'm working with high school signals, they always go in and say RX. So I'll hook up RX to RX and TX to TX, but it doesn't work that way. TX means talk or transmit. You should be transmitting to the pen, not the other guy's pen that's transmitting, but the other guy's pen that's what? Listening. You talk to the pen that's listening and you listen to the pen that's talking. So TX should connect to RX and RX should connect to TX and that way one guy's talking, the other guy's listening. And that's a common mistake that I see. People hook TXs to TXs. No! TX goes to RX, RX goes to TX. So let me see if I can zoom in here. You can see that we have TX on the GPS, or we have RX on the GPS hooked in 24, which is TX on the big Beagle Bone. TX on the GPS is hooked to 26 on the Beagle Bone, which is RX on the Beagle, Beagle Bone. So you get that hooked up. As soon as you hook it up, you should see a slowly blinking light here, and you can see this slowly blinking light. What does that slowly blinking light mean? That means you don't have a fix. That means the GPS is not talking to the satellites because we are inside and I have a metal roof, and so it will not see the satellites while we are in here. But we can continue to build the software nonetheless. Get your circuit hooked up, and then I think that we are going to be ready to start writing some code. So you can see here that I have a terminal window, and we are going to, in, uh, where am I? PWD, I am in the home slash my Python folder. If you've been going along, you should have a my Python folder as well. If you don't, you can make one with mkdir my underscore python. You want to kind of go to your root, you want to go to your uh, home folder first, and then inside your home folder you want to create this uh, uh, this directory. What are we going to call this? Nano will edit the file and then we will call it hmm, gps dot pi. You don't have to put a dot pi extension on your Python programs, but when you do, it works very nice because you can organize them. All of your Python programs have the suffix dot pi or the extension. All right, so how do we get this thing going? Well, the first thing is we're going to be needing to talk over the serial port, so we need to import 
serial. Okay, if you do not have serial, if you get an error, you need to go back and update and upgrade to the latest operating system. The latest operating system, the Debian Wheezy 7 for BeagleBone Black, comes with the serial uh, comes with the serial library installed. If uh, you don't have that, you need to update and upgrade, or you need to go in and look into uh, 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 downloading the serial library to your uh, BeagleBone Black. But you got to import it either way into your Python program. Also, we are going to be working with the the serial pins. We are going to be working with the serial pins, so we have to import the Adafruit library. This Adafruit library doesn't have anything to do with the GPS. This is the Adafruit library that they made very nicely, I might say, for the BeagleBone Black. So we're going to say Adafruit fruit underscore BBIO. You got to do it uppercase, lowercase. You got to do the case exactly the way I'm doing it. You art. I don't know. That's universal something, something, uh, universal something, receive and transmit, I would guess. But this is, is the library that allows you to use the serial ports, the serial port pins on the, uh, on the beagle bone. And we'll import that as you art. Okay. Now we've got to initialize those pins. We've got to initialize the uh, serial pins and the ones that we want to initialize. In fact, let's go back and see if we can even see this. I'm going to go back to uh, BeagleBone Black and I am going to lesson one. And you can see here that what we are going to be doing is we want to update the UART1 the UART1 or pins 24 and 26, those TX and RX pins. And so we want to activate those. Okay. How do we do that? Well, we've imported the UART library. So now we do the function UART.setup. And what do we want to set up? We want to set up UART1. Okay. If we wanted to use different pins, we could set up UART2 or something else. Now, we need to open a serial port. We've activated the pins. Now we have to open the port between the GP between the BeagleBone Black and the GPS. So we open a serial port. I'm going to call my serial port GPS because I'm talking to GPS, and that's equal to serial dot serial. Notice the capitalization. Notice the misspelling on both of those. Serial, serial. Notice the capitalization. Serial dot serial. Serial small s dot serial large s. Kind of confusing, huh? Okay. Now we have to tell it where the port is. Like if we were on a Windows machine, this would be like COM9, COM10, COM7. But for us, we have to give it the path to the device, and it's in slash dev slash tty. Listen to me. I am fixing to type in a capital O, the letter O capital, not a zero. I got hung up for three days trying to get this thing to work because it looked like a zero when it was really an O, and I couldn't get it to work. When I figured out that it was an O, capital O, I made it work. I'm sorry. Now we're going to do it this way. TTY. What am I going to type? Capital O, the letter O. One, the number. So little TTY, capital letter O, and then the number one. That is where our, uh, that is where our device is going to be. And then we got to tell it the baud rate. I happen to know that the GPS default baud rate is 9600, which will work very nicely for us. Okay, so now that's going to establish the communication, the serial communication channel between the UART1 pins and the GPS. Uh, I don't think I'm going to put any delays in here, so I don't need to import time. Now I'm just going to create a loop while one. That just means, you know, in the Arduino, you had the void loop that was kind of like a free loop, always looping. Well, here we're going to create a loop while one, well, one is always one, so this basically loops forever. Now, we don't want to go out and try to read 
from the GPS or read from that serial port if there's no data there. So we want to sit and wait for data. Once there's data there, then we want to read it. Then we want to wait for data. So what do I want to do? While GPS, how do I see if there's any data there? I say in waiting. Look at that. I in capital W. A I T O. I am misspelling like a crazy man. In waiting equal equals zero. What this is saying is while GPS in waiting is equal to zero, that means while there is no data on that GPS port, what do I do? What do I do when there's oops? What do I do when there's no data? Absolutely nothing. I pass. So this thing is going to just sit and loop doing nothing until data is sent from the GPS over to the Beagle Bone Black. Actually, I hate doing things this way uh, because the way this GPS works, he doesn't listen very well. He just sits and talks. He just sits and spits out data. You don't ask him for anything. He just sits and spits out data. So you've got to kind of on the beagle bone side get ready to catch it because it's going to come like a fire hose. I like a client server relationship much better. I wish that we could send a command from the beagle bone black, hey, send me something, and then it would send, and we would sit and we would talk and listen very politely. Uh, the GPS just sits and just vomits out uh, these uh, this data stream, and so we're going to have to kind of work over on the Python side to catch it. And the way we do it is we sit and we wait until there's data, and then once there's data, we will read it in. And I told you that these data streams that are coming in are called NEMA sentences, N-M-E-A, and so we will just call this N-M-E-A. What's confusing is there's like five different types of NEMA sentences, and it's just spitting every which kind. The thing is the first characters of the NEMA string will tell you what type of sentence it is, and then we will later on know how to parse it. So we're going to say NEMA is equal to GPS. We're going to read it dot read line. So what is this saying? We're going to go out. There's data on the GPS serial bus. There's data there because we've fallen out of this. Because we've fallen out of this, what are we going to do? We're going to read it. <clears throat> Once we read it, what are we going to do? Print it. Print NEMA. Understand, we are inside. So we will not have a fix. But what I want to see is I just want to see that I'm getting empty NEMA sentences. It should just be spitting out data that just has zeros and blanks in it. But that's just saying that we've succeeded in doing really what's one of the probably the hardest part is getting the GPS to talk to the beagle bone. And even though the sentences are easy, uh, empty, if we get those sentences coming in, then we can go get a fix and then we can see that we're actually getting meaningful, uh, meaningful data coming off of it. But for right now, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to print the NEMA and then we're just going to sit in wait for their data when there's data then print it then wait for data when there's data read it and print it wait for data when there's data read it and print it okay so how do we save this control O yes I like that enter control X okay now we'll find all the mistakes we made Py I made Python GPS dot pi look at that boom NEMA sentence is coming in all right look at that the GPS is sending NEMA sentences and we, <coughs> we are reading them and they are just sitting there spewing out and we are bringing them in. Let me, let me stop that with control C. Let's go up and look at this a little, uh, let's go up and look at this a little bit. You can see that this dollar GPTV, uh, GP, VTG, that's a certain type of NEMA sentence. The GPRMC is a certain type of NEMA sentence. The GPGSA is a certain type. The GPGGA is a certain type. And the GPT GPVTG, now we're back to the now we're back to the first. So it looks like that we've got what four different types of NEMA sentences. Some of them are redundant. And there's really just two of them. I'll show you this in a future lesson, but we're going to get it where we're just getting two of those NEMA sentences because everything you could possibly want would be in just those two, and that way we're going to kind of throw out some of this uh, some of this irrelevant data. Had this been a real test, 
we would between these commas have things like longitude, latitude, altitude, velocity, whether we have a fix or not, the number of satellites that we're tracking, the angle of the satellites. The, I mean, there's just all types of really cool data in here. But right now, what, we're, what we are is the beagle bone is talking to the GPS and getting data, but the GPS is not talking to the satellites because of the roof. What I might do is I might just go ahead and try to get a fix and show you in this lesson some real NEMA sentences coming in. So hold on. Okay, I am back. And if you look over here, I hope things are pointing the right direction, but if you look over here, what you can see is I have taken our beagle bone black and the most excellent Adafruit GPS breakout board, and I have moved it over here at the window. So I've sort of put it in the window, kind of pointing at the window so it can see the sky up here. You can see our Eagle 3 uh, uh, flight platform for our, our high altitude space probe, and you can see our ground based tracking system. So we have a lot of fun things going on here in our room. So it's been sitting over there a little bit uh, for a minute or two. So we want to see, do we have a fix? Are we getting real data? Well, we will run the program again. We will come over here and it was uh, Python gps.py and we are running it. And look at that. We in fact have a fix. So you see we are getting all types of numbers here. I will stop this. Okay, so we can get some of these numbers. Let me tell you guys, if you really want to understand these NMEA, these NEMA sentences, uh, come back to our uh, top tech, come back to our, our website, www.toptechboy.com, and then go to Arduino tutorial or Arduino lessons. Okay, Arduino lessons. And then I believe it was lesson number 24. And what I go in in this lesson is I really go in and show what all of this data means. And I'm not going to go through all of it today. But I will give you a quick recap because I know that you don't want to go back and look at the old lesson. The thing to understand in all of this is there's really two NEMA sentences need. And we can get everything we want from those two NEMA sentences. The GPRMC which is this one. We want that one. And the GCGGA. Am I getting a GC? Yeah. Or GP GGA. Yeah, I'm sorry. GP GGA. This one and this one. And you see there's a bunch of other ones that are mixed in there with it. But really, these are the two that we want. And I can kind of go through this just looking at it. Most likely, I can tell you what a lot of this stuff means. This is the universal coordinated time. So it's 14 hours, 52 minutes, 40 seconds coordinated universal time. The A means I'm active. A V would be void. A is what you want to see. That means things are working. OK, this is my latitude. This would be degrees. So it is 30 degrees and then 51.7773 minutes. Now, normally you think degrees, minutes, seconds, but this doesn't work that way. These two to the left of the decimal point are minutes. So I'm at 51 minutes, 51.7773 minutes in the northern hemisphere. So the 30 is the degrees. So 30 degrees, 51.7773 minutes. So if you wanted to convert this to degree minute second, it would be 31 degrees, 51 minutes, and you would take 0.7773 and multiply by 60, and that would give you seconds. Here we have, uh, again, these two are the minutes. And so I have 35.7586 minutes and 100 degrees. So this is my latitude. This is my longitude. I'm on a longitude of 100 degrees, 35.7586 degrees, and I'm in the Western Hemisphere. If you go to Google Earth, the easiest way to do this is just put a space between the 30 and the 51, and it will understand that. And then you don't have to put north and then comma. You would put 100 space and then this. And the west, Google doesn't want to see a west. If you're in the Western Hemisphere, put a negative in front of that. And then that will get you showing where you are on Google Earth. 
We'll go through these and show you. This will also show you what your altitude is, what your elevation is, what your speed is. It will tell you lots of good information, but I'm not going to go through all that today. What we have done at this point is really, I think, outstanding for one lesson. We have hooked the Beagle Bone Black up to the Adafruit GPS. They're talking together. <coughs> the GPS is talking to the GPS is talking to the satellites. And so we are sitting here at home base getting live streaming data of position. So we're going to stop for today. What we're going to do in future lessons is we're going to go in and start showing you first of all next lesson how we can kind of tell the GPS would you stop sending me all this nonsense and just send me the two sentences that we want and then we'll go in and start talking about how to parse these sentences and build something like a cool super cool GPS logger. Paul McWhorter toptechboy.com if you like these lessons give us a thumbs up think about sharing the lesson subscribe to our channel we will talk to you guys later